Hey guys, Anna Lunchbox here, I'm picking up right where I left off in the last video. Um, so this is the tutorial section about sound effects. And that's this section here. Uh, so where to start? Well, we can just drag and drop all the sound effects uh, into Sound Manager. So let's go here, select a couple, just drag them. Demo sounds, drag them, and boom. It's easy. Attaching sound effects to the sound manager removes the load time from resources.load. Um, stay away from hangups in your game because of audio. It's really efficient for smaller games to do it like this, but don't worry, we'll get into various memory management options a little later. So let's hit up the documentation. So let's go to the sound effects section. Here. So as you can see, there are many different ways to play sound effects with Sound Manager Pro, but they are all pooled when you play them, keeping memory efficiency in mind. The first way to play sound effects is the regular way, um, which you can find with these four. Regular play sound effects plays a clip on a sound effects object created by Sound Manager Pro, and it is pooled. So if we go here, go back to the game, Hit play, click me actually in a demo scene, uh, plays the sound effect. Oh, you, actually, you can actually see one of the sound effects objects are here. Um, so this is actually the particle. Uh, I don't have them set to destroy when they're done. But you can see uh, it's pulled, it created another one. It's reusing those sound effects objects. So there's never been more than two here. Obviously, if you click a lot more, it's going to have to make more. So, But it didn't have to make 15 to match the amount that I clicked. So going back to the documentation here, you can see that with all these methods of playing sound effects, you can specify the location to play the sound effects that you want. Um, you can also specify a specific volume or pitch, which is independent from the sound manager settings that you set globally. In Sound Manager Tools, you can find that here. Let's go down to Extensions. Sound Manager Tools, let's just open this up. I also provide you with a way to force an audio source to be 2D or 3D. Since every play sound effects function returns the resulting audio source, doing this is really easy. So let's go back to the documentation. Uh, the second method of playing sound effects is to play the sound effect directly on another game object. So if you have a moving game object, say an enemy, you can play the sound effects directly on him so it follows him around. And don't worry again, this sound effect is still pooled. And if this particular game object does not have an audio source on it, then one will be created for you. So this is this section right here. So let's go for an example of that. I actually have it so that clicking this, uh, click me half of the time makes a pulled object and half of the time plays it on the particle effect. So we can see here, probably through one of these. Let me unlock this. Yeah, so this one, it wanted to play explosion one. Uh, not all of them are like that, but I'll show you that in a second. Yeah, like this one doesn't have it. This one doesn't have it. This one does. I just set it at random to switch between playing it on a game object or playing it on a pooled sound effects object. So, the second use of this is for looping sounds. For instance, if you have a magnet sound that you want to keep playing on a magnet particle effect, you can set the looping parameter to true. Hold on, let me go back to the documentation. And here you'll find, here, this looping parameter. And once you set that to true, it will loop the track on this game object. In order to turn it off, you can use, go down to stop sound effects object, where you just enter in that game object and it will stop it. 
So the third method of playing sound effects actually caters more towards customizing loop sound effects. So if we go back up to play sound effects loop. It is similar to the second method, but it lets you set when a loop ends. You can set the loop to end when an object dies or after maximum duration, whichever comes first. And the fourth and final method, which is play cap sound effects, uh, introduces that excellent feature, cap sound effects. Um, with this function, you can cap any group of clips to a string cap ID. So here you have your string capped ID. By default, the cap sound effects respect the default sound effects cap value set either on the prefab or in code. So let's check that out. Come back here, click Sound Manager, let's lock that. Um, this is the sound effects cap amount. You can set that here in developer settings. Um, I explained earlier that you can specify a certain, uh, a certain cap to a group as well. So if I have my group, I add that here. And I don't want to auto cap just respects the sound effects cap amount. No cap doesn't respect any cap amount and or you can just set it to a value yourself so let's set it to seven and now let's set uh, some sound effects to that group so all the sound effects in uh, my group will respect my group's cap value and keep in mind that you can do all of this in code as well so why do you need cap sound effects well sometimes the sound effect gets played a bunch of times at once and ends up being really loud and staticky, which drowns out other sounds. It's just nasty in general. Sound effects caps limit how much these clips are played at once, which is great for high action games like tower defenses, blitz puzzle games, first person shooters, or war games. Like all other sound effects functions, cap sound effects are pooled when played. So let's go back to the documentation. So Sound Manager Pro includes its own load function. So let's go down there. This function will first look in the stored sound effects of Sound Manager for the clip specified. If it can't find it there, it will then use a default resources path specified in the Sound Manager in the developer's settings, so which is right here, default load path. You can also set it to look at a custom path first, which is this overload find it right here. This load function is a great segue into memory management options. While loading all your sound effects onto the sound manager prefab makes it efficient because all the loading is done during your app load, these clips are still loaded into memory. Keep in mind that playing 30 instances of the same clip does not translate into 30 instances of that clip into memory, which is good. But if you have 100 different clips, you may not want that loaded into memory all the time. So there is a way to only store certain audio clips at certain times into the sound manager stored sound effects. And you can use this function, save sound effects. You can either use this or directly modify the instance variable. You can use this or directly modify the instance variable, uh, soundmanager.instance.storedSoundEffects. Do this when a certain level loads and you'll keep the cost of memory down if it's proving to be a problem. You only need to do this if you have hundreds of clips as Unity already does a large bulk of audio memory management for you, as long as it's on the sound manager prefab. So let's go back to sound effects groups. Sound effects groups are a new growing feature in sound manager pro. When you group sound effects together, there are certain attributes and functions you can do inside a group. Currently, you can use Sound Manager Load From Group to get a group clip at random. And as I explained earlier, you can set specific sound effects caps. Well, that about covers it for sound effects. Comment out on the forums if you have further questions. Click any of the videos linked on the edges to delve further into Sound Manager Pro. Happy game making.